Hi, my name is Dr. Frank A. Thomas, and I had the opportunity to speak with Pastor Clinton D. McFarland, who is the senior pastor and founder of Grace Baptist Church in Stockbridge, Georgia. Check out this clip from our conversation. To watch the full conversation, click the link at the end of the video or in the description below. It will bless you. It was an amazing interview. So who were some of your preaching mentors? Who, who influenced your preaching? Well, first of all and foremost, uh, my father. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was the most popular and probably prepared preacher mm -hmm. in the area. And I idolized him. When I first accepted my call, I just wanted to be as good as my dad. Mm -hmm. Never thought I would get there. Uh, so he was, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but to this day, he is the greatest influence as a man, mm -hmm. how he treated mama, mm -hmm. uh, how he carried himself, yeah. the things he kept us from yeah. as children that I've discovered of course, since being a part of the uh, clergy community, but um, my father, and then I have to say my, my big brother, my oldest brother, um, he was the educated preacher in our family. And, you know, just taught me things as it relates to how to carry myself. Don't dress too flashy. Make sure your shoes shine, be prepared sitting in the pulpit, that's 50% of your sermon before you ever get up, those kinds of things. And then I was introduced by my father to the Reverend Jasper Williams by way of cassette tapes and all of that kind of thing. And after I heard him, oh man, I'ma be the next Jasper. So I mimicked everything. His who, I mean, all of that, you know. <laughs> I mimicked, I mean, the mannerisms, the way he did his hand and he talked. And so, you know, from there, Donald Parsons at the convention, you would know him well from Chicago. Uh, but then when I really got serious, it was like uh, guys like Gardner Taylor, mm -hmm. William Augustus Jones, these guys were scholars. Uh, and, you know, a lot of guys have influenced me and then I still have guys who are influencing me, uh, men and women, yeah. that I just uh, love what they do because I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of preachers. Yeah. So I want to go back to your dad because that might be the biggest influence I would imagine. It so, is. so what kind of preacher was your dad? Man, that is interesting. My father was what you might call a narrative mm -hmm. preacher and then expository in his clothes. He really never told the story until he was closing. Mm. Uh, he would center uh, his information around his text. Um, he was comical. Mm -hmm. um, he was narrative, so to speak, what I would call narrative. Mm -hmm. um, is, a hoop, is a hooper? Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. oh, one of the best. <laughs> one of the best. That's, that's, so tell me about it. Tell, <laughs> tell me about it. Tell me about it. Well, just what you would call, if you're from Mississippi, he could flat foot do it. <laughs> you know. And he was known for that, but he was also knowledgeable. Dad was not formally trained, mm -hmm. but he was well read. Uh, and a lot of my influences, he turned me on to them. I told you like Gardner Taylor, William Augustus Jones, we would listen to Dr. Jones on Saturday when, they, when we had the big satellite dish. Um, but he was a knowledgeable guy. He was very serious about saying something. He would tell me all the time, son, you know, gravy is good, but bad meat will make gravy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you want good meat and you want to be solid um, prior to the celebration. Yeah. But he could, oh my God, mm. he could celebrate with the best of them. Yeah, yeah. So do you think that, you know, because you do similar, yes. that, that this tradition has been passed to you in the family? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I, 
used to hoop exactly like my father. Of course, I have evolved uh, and changed and tweaked some things, but uh, uh, definitely uh, I love the, the celebration. Uh, I love, uh, but I'm having a greater appreciation um, probably the last 10, 15 years for the content. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't feel good if I didn't do a good job up front yeah. because starting out you could say a little something mm -hmm. uh, and if you could if you were sweet mm -hmm. <laughs> on the end and skilled you you felt like you made it right. uh, but my father would be so dissatisfied with that I never will forget funny story uh, he went with me to church. This is prior to pastor, and I think I had been preaching maybe two months, and it was a choir anniversary. So I'm the preacher. Dad said, I'm going to drive you to church. I said, okay, I'm so excited. So I got up, and I told my little story, said a little something, wasn't much, but I was sweet on the end. Mm. And they were shouting and dancing and having a good time. So I thought I, I did it. Mm. Oh, I was, I was on it. So we get back in the car. My dad was silent halfway home until we got halfway home. And he started out, he said, mm, mm, mm. I said, oh yeah, I'm getting ready to get it now. He's getting ready to tell me. He said, son, you are naturally gifted. He said, mm, mm. He said, if I had your natural gift, I don't know what I would do. I said, thank you, daddy. He said, if you mess around and get something to say, you're going to be a mad Negro. <laughs> I felt that small. <laughs> but he taught me, and then he took me to the text and said, here's what you should have done. You, you didn't give the background. I talked about when Saul lost his anointing because he disobeyed God with the Amalekites. I never will forget that. And he said, you didn't say any of that. You, and here is what you should have said.